Welcome back. Computers are great at storing information. They're nearly as good at retrieving that information as well. We've already looked at files and folders on a computer, but let's consider the structure these are stored in. At the basic or bottom level is a file. This could be a picture or a document that you want to store and retrieve at a later date. An example may be a photo of a recent holiday. This is stored in a folder which is a container for keeping related files. I'm likely to want to keep all my holiday photos in the same folder, for example. Now, if I'm lucky, I might go on a few holidays, so I'd have a folder for each one. I could store each of these folders in a folder of its own. Perhaps I'd have a folder called My Holidays. In this folder, I'd have folders called Summer 18, Winter 18, Spring 19, and so on. Each of these, of course, will contain photos from that particular holiday. What if I have other photos? I might have pictures from social occasions, sporting events, etc. I could have a folder called Photos, which contains folders for social occasions. In it would be folders for each of the social occasions I have taken pictures at. A folder called Sporting Events, again containing folders for each of the events I have taken photos at. And of course, I can keep the My Holidays folder in there as well. There is one more level to this. Remember that a computer will normally contain a hard drive, used for long-term storage. It may also have a CD or DVD drive, and perhaps a USB drive attached to it as well. Windows assigns what it calls drive letters to each of these devices. For example, the hard drive in a computer is usually assigned the letter C. Why C, I hear you ask? Well, if you're as old as me, you may remember computers used to use floppy disks. The letters A and B were used for the floppy disk drives. So although computers don't usually have floppy disk drives anymore, these letters are usually skipped as some older systems still expect the hard drive to be the third device and therefore assign the letter C. So a typical computer will have the hard drive set as drive C, the CD or DVD drive to D, and any USB drives will grab the next available letter, starting from E. It is possible to have more than one letter assigned to a device. This is most commonly used with hard drives. It's a way of separating or segmenting the space. It's a bit like having a large house. If we left the outside of the house as it was, but inside we converted it to two or more flats or apartments, Doing this with a hard drive would require each partition, as they are called, to be assigned a drive letter. The first would normally be assigned C drive. The second will usually be called D drive. Just as with the house that we've split into two apartments, they don't have to be the same size. We might have one small and one large apartment. The same is true when partitioning a drives. It's completely flexible. You might have two small partitions and one larger one. Each will be assigned a drive letter starting at C and working through the alphabet. Any other devices, for example the CD drive, will just get the next available letter once the hard drive has all the letters it needs. Although files and folders can be created and moved at any time, drive partitions can only be created and changed when they are empty. Changing partitions will lose any data stored on the drive. The hard drive partitions are usually created for you before you buy the computer, and as it means losing anything stored on the computer, they are rarely changed. So if we look back at our computer and open Windows Explorer, on the left I will click on this PC. This allows us to quickly see the drives that are connected to the computer. We can see that I have a local disk, C drive, that's a little over half full, indicated by the blue bar. To the right I have EXHDD, drive D. This is a much bigger drive, 931 gigabytes compared to 118 for drive C. Again, it's around half full. Let's have a look at the structure of these. I'll click the small arrow to the left of this PC in the left panel. This opens or expands everything under this PC. This is called a tree view. Think of the way the branches on a tree connect down to smaller and smaller branches. That's what is happening here. If I click on local disk, C, then the contents are displayed in the right panel. 
I can do the same for the EX HDD drive. When I click it, the contents are displayed in the panel on the right. But if I click the arrow to the left of the local disk C, then the tree or branch expands to show me everything under this level. We now get to see a hierarchy that everything is stored in. At the top level, we have the drive, in this case a C drive. Below this, we have folders, and in these folders could be other folders or files. The arrow next to a folder indicates that there are folders within that folder. So if I click the arrow next to users, I see that it contains two folders. The first, 80, that's the folder that all my files and folders are stored. Again, notice the arrow, so there are more subfolders within AD. Let's expand the tree for the D drive as well. Click the arrow to the left and we see all the folders contained within. I'll then keep drilling down by clicking the arrows next to the subfolders. First the OneDrive folder, then the Downloads folder. You can close the branches again just by clicking the down arrow next to a folder or drive. In this lesson, we have looked at how Microsoft Windows organizes and stores files and folders. We have discussed how Windows uses drive letters to identify storage areas, for example, the hard drive and how folders and files are stored on the drives. I then gave you a walkthrough using Windows Explorer to demonstrate the hierarchical nature of the folder structure used within Windows. This used a tree view to show the various levels of folder structure. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.